So I haven't made uh, great changes to my tackle. All I've decided to do is, since it's even colder, I'm going to fish right in the middle of the boat channel at 7 metres, which puts, you, puts me right at the bottom of the far shelf. 8 metres where I was last time, took me up into slightly shallower water, hence why I caught the green, I think. Now, perch tend to like it deep and dark. Uh, there is some far bank cover there if I had a 14 metre pole I could probably get over there, but um, I haven't. I've got uh, just an 8 metre pole with me. So, exactly the same as before, I'm going to feed in uh, a big cup of bait, chop lobworms, some dendrobeaners I'm going to chop up this time as well, and of course, plenty of casters. So, let's get some bait in there. Now I did debate uh, setting up two top sections, um, but I decided against it. Not enough time to construct the two lines properly. And, uh, I thought it's better to do the job properly on one line rather than trying to uh, disperse my efforts over two. If I was here for five or six hours, which is rare for me to get the time to do that, I probably would. But anyway, surely old pole put up, or in my case, on this pole, because it doesn't have a dedicated cupping kit. The, uh, Preston Megapot. If you're on a budget, I would always recommend buying one of them if your pole doesn't come with a dedicated top kit. Supplied though most of them do these days. Again, just seven metres today. Fishing the short pole, you don't need to worry about uh, having two pole rollers, etc. One will do. Make shipping in and out so much easier. Anyway, let's get these out. So I've just fed two generous cup uh, potfuls. They're not huge, but they're quite big. Bait going to be uh, half a lobworm as usual. Though I will try a couple of sections of dendrobina should this not work. But it normally does. And uh, I like to hook them by in the cutting. <laughs> Now what perch could resist that? A big one. And we've just had the first bite. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. Missed. Oh well. In again. 
good sign. Did give it plenty of time. I'll count to five next time though. If I get another one. But it's a very good sign to get a bite so quickly. That's been in the water about four or five minutes. Now I don't know how well the Gro GoPro is picking this up, but the canal has now started towing like a river. And uh, all I'll do is just move my pole along the pole rest. Um, if you've got one of these bump bars, oh, and I had a very quick bite straight away. Ease it down again. Fish often do that, they'll watch it and take it while it hangs in the water. I'll run it down a bit more. And a bit more. So I'm probably a good 10 feet down from where I put my bait in because when it flows like this, it inevitably, inevitably, sorry, uh, moves the bait. So I just reach up, swing the pole around, drop the rig in again. I let it come back to settle where I set the original feed. It's basically like trotting a stick float, but with a very short line. And a lot of people don't realise um, that you can catch fish when it's towing like this. I'm just hoping that today I can get a big perch in. Flow is slowing down a little bit. And the reason I quite like this float is the thick bristle. I would prefer to have a longer bristle, but this short thick bristle will help. These um, little Drennan uh, margin crystals are incredibly versatile little floats. I use mine in a lot of situations where the water's not too deep. Anything over six foot, forget it. But this canal's probably five, five and a half feet deep at its deepest spot. So, anyway, so uh, concentrate on the fishing. Well, after a couple of uh, missed bites it's gone very quiet um, so I'm just searching down the swim to see if that uh, toe from the canal moved the bait a lot which it probably did but I should give it a little while longer and <laughs> here is the culprit much as I expected Just a tiny little perch. So as always, when you're doing something, in my case, chopping up worms, I looked up to see the float had gone, but it was only a little fish. I think I'm going to uh, take the chance and pot out some more worms. Yeah. <laughs> 
Now, because I don't have a lot of time, I'm trying to uh, force the fish into feeding. Whether that will work or not remains to be seen. But I'm getting bites of small fish. It's just not fish I wanted. Oh well. I know how to get a bite. Pour myself a cup of coffee. Pouring the coffee would work. I missed one bite as I looked down and I've still got a little fish attacking the worm. But I guess they're small perch, skimmers, roach, whatever. Yeah, he's still there. Felt slightly bigger. Not that that's saying a lot. It's amazing how many times this happens, and I'm sure every fisherman knows this one. You can be sitting there biteless. Pick up your flask, and you, oh, and I've got another bite while I talk. But I'm certain these are small fish. Canal's now towing the other way. No, it's decided to stop again. So I've just uh, took the hook length off and swapped it for a uh, size 14. Loop to loop. Same length, hook length, so <coughs> that's not a problem. More pleasure anglers should uh, do that. What I'm going to do is just nip the end of the worm off. Now, because it's still a strong hook, a strong line, should a bigger fish come along, I stand a good chance of getting it out. Just thrown a few more casters in over the top and I should start catching smaller fish now but I will change back to a bigger hook if I think there's bigger fish about and want a bigger bait but sometimes on days like today they don't want a big bait have to wait and see too many anglers will just sit there and not change or try and work things out but I'm trying to uh, catch some fish not just sit here by the canal well they don't seem to want a small bait uh, perhaps it's time to change back to a big one it's only a matter of 30 seconds just to unloop that hook length and loop a new one on so And the floating leaves and rubbish are being a real pain. But that's autumn for you. But it seems like every leaf in the, on the surface is magnetically attracted to my pole float. And I have a small fish. <laughs> and what have I got? I have another small fish. 
Oh, well. Well, right target species, wrong size. Just a quick dip on the float there. Uh, again, there's obviously fish about. Run a bit, uh, another little fast dip, and another one. Probably a little perch just sucking in and blowing it out. But I'm gonna keep persisting because it is getting towards the witching hour now. In fishing terms, it's a winter time. In the summer, I'd almost call it bat o'clock. I don't think the bats are silly enough to come out at this time of the year. Though someone might tell me otherwise, but I've never seen any in the winter. Well, I'm getting less response on small baits than I was on bigger baits, so... Bring it back in, and change back to the bigger hook. And this time, still trying something different. Take a whole lob, pinch it in half, and put two halves on. And Marty Bowler swears by this for perching. I have done it with success, but today, just trying, just trying to get these fish on something. <laughs> Would you believe I've had a bite on it straight away? Again, just a little dip, small fish. And there we go, see it dived under and again and again. So I guess this is just small fish. But I can't be doing with just wasting my time sitting here doing nothing. I've got to try and make something happen. It's a lesson for all anglers, and you'll see match anglers doing it a lot. And the float's gone. And the first, well, <laughs> I won't say big fish, because it's not. How can I put this bigger? Go. Yep. It's still moving. So go back out there and try again. I'm really hopeful that one of these big perch will show up, but when it's rock hard and cold like this, it's not easy. Another small fish. That small fish or not. Just want something a bit bigger. And small fish are topping on the surface as well. And you know the small silver fish are active. And 
here we go again. E oh. And another small perch. I thought for a second it was going to be something a bit better. And the cheeky gets taken more worm. There we go. Right, same again. Bob worm pinched in half. But sometimes the feeding activity of these small perch <coughs> can definitely uh, get the bigger fish going. Do you know, I'd almost swear those couple of dips were line bites. The float moves strangely in the water. I'm wondering if there is a big fish swimming around out there. I keep getting odd little dips on the float. So there's still fish out there, but they're being very finicky. I'm wondering if the bream are there. I hope not. I would, not that I mind catching the bream, but I am after perch and yes, the light is very nearly gone. So I've so I've just moved the floater a little bit further down the swim. If the fish are there and hang, yeah, and there's small fish jumping out. I don't know if the camera's catching this. But there's, uh, there's quite a lot of small fish activity. I don't want small fish, I want big fish. Right, want another pot full of shot worm in and cast up. Handful of dendrobinas. And this time I'm going to mix a, a handful of pinkies in with it. I'm up quite fine. Casters. I can't understand where the bigger fish are today. It might be just too cold for them to feed. But I've caught them when there's ice on the canal, so. I'm just relying on this dusk feeding spell. I'm still lifting and dropping and Yes, no one can say I haven't tried. Yeah. Probably if I'd come here and fished bread punch, I would have got a net full of uh, small roach and skimmers, but I didn't want to do that. I want one of these big canal perch on film. What to do? 
Oh, straight. Off with a big worm. Well, still getting bites from small fish. But for the life of me, I can't get a big one. So I've got five minutes and then I'll have to be off. Shame. Can't win them all.